Everybody, hello. Um, I'm Zach. I'm the briquette research intern here at Instove. Uh, today, as you know, is briquette day, so this is my special day. Uh, the reason briquettes are so easy to make is because they use um, pretty much anything that's available that burns. This can be any local crop waste. Uh, such as hay, grass, uh, corn and coffee husks, that sort of thing. And they can also use industrial waste, of course, clean industrial waste like paper, for instance. And so the recipe for briquette will vary by region just depending on what's available. And pretty much there are there are a lot of things that can be used which is what makes this so convenient and now Stella will discuss uh, where briquette should be used I kind of already addressed this but here's Stella um, so obviously you don't want to be using briquettes in places that are populated with a lot of available wood um, because if it's used properly it wood obviously is a sustainable resource. Um, so we're talking more areas that are maybe challenged um, when it comes to human conflict, human wildlife conflict, where you don't want to be uh, farming trees necessarily, or places that have a lot of waste or residue from uh, manufacturing byproducts, that sort of thing. Um, also places where there's cultural conflict in terms of um, injury uh, or death to women. Because women are the ones who most often go out to get firewood, it's important that we're considering their health and safety as well. Um, another aspect that we are talking about today is that briquette processing, especially when it comes to the manufacturing and the creating, which we'll talk about later today, gives women a chance to mingle together and communicate and women talking together is the huge key piece to maternal child health because they're able to share resources they're able to talk about problems they're able to talk in a safe environment about you know aids and just all these different um different plights of women that are not necessarily something they're comfortable talking about to their husband um, so that's important as well um, let me look at my outline I think I covered everything, um, but we do also want to talk about extortion and financial gain. So what extortion looks like out in the field, especially when it comes to wood gathering, and then what this could look like as like a microfinancing opportunity as well. Okay. So basically, um, as a microfinancing idea, this is pretty straightforward. The press itself, it's not dirt cheap, but it's not expensive, and it can be built, or something similar could be built by any blacksmith in Africa, um, which makes it accessible just about anywhere. And it's the kind of thing where the materials are almost free, so it's a easy, um, there are ways to make an easy small business out of this. Um, you know, people, a group of women could organize a team, gather the materials and make the briquettes and sell them locally. Um, as far as extortion goes, that's kind of the flip side of this coin is, is in places like especially refugee camps where wood is really scarce, sometimes the best place to get fuel is from the guys with guns because they're the only ones who can get it. Um, so they can charge whatever they want and this is a good way to help put guys like that out of business. Cool. Yeah, and I think that's all I have on that. Um, um, do you want to talk about the Peterson Press? Well, something we wanted to touch on was the history of briquettes. And uh, earlier we were doing some research and we found that basically they predate history in what country? Nepal. In Nepal. Predate written history. Um, and so this is obviously not something that we just came up with, but people have always known, you know, if you burn scraps of wood or scraps of paper, that also produces fire, which also produces heat and energy. Um, and so this is just a more compact way of doing that. Um, with briquettes, they usually will burn gram for gram, just the same as wood, which is what we want. Um, what we want to look at today is the difference between um, briquettes that are made poorly. So this, for example, is made of a decomposed mixture, which was not formulated in any particular manner. So we'll talk about kind of if you follow a few simple rules you can make a great briquette. So like this for example, bad briquette. <laughs> 
Um, also, they produce a lot of dust and um, residue at the end. This is a great briquette. This is just hay and paper. Um, and this one, whew, it didn't break. <laughs> um, but these, these burn really clean, so there's not going to be a lot of ash residue. They burn quickly. A lot of the time, you don't even need kindling to start. Um, a good briquette will save you about 90% of your firewood. Um, we do usually uh, suggest that you still start with kindling because it gets your fire going faster. Um, and hotter. Fine. Um, so this kind of briquette has been around for a while. Um, I think the first commercial attempt at briquettes was sometimes in the 80s, and these are used in an open fire usually. Um, the little donut hole in the middle is like a mini combustion chamber, like a mini rocket stove, so they burn a little bit cleaner than you could get with, you know, just sticks of wood. So there are cases where they work really well for that, and our stoves, they don't fit so well, so they're not ideal. That's why we have the, uh, the sticks. They burn probably about twice as hot in our stoves. Um, also in stoves with combustion, also stoves that have combustion chambers like ours, there's no need to have two combustion chambers. Um, so stick is a lot more useful. Also, um, it will start burning on one end, and as it burns, it will preheat the wet rest of the material, just like a natural stick does. Um, so we've done a few pretty informal water boiling tests with the different kinds of fuel. Um, always wood comes out on top with these briquettes following very, very closely. So one of the things that we urge you to do is we have our rocket stoves set up for uh, just some informal testing, if you guys are open to that, as well as feel free to bring some of the fuel to your own stoves and see how briquettes work in those as well. Well, we have a few of the donut shaped ones, which were made with the Peterson press, and then we have a few of the stick shaped ones. Um, and then, well, let's get into the process of how this works. Quick demo of our press. This is our second generation prototype. Um, the basic concept is you fill up these chambers with your mix, um, advance it through with this lever, you press out each chamber like that. It condenses it from a stack like this to a briquette like that. Um, press out all four. And then pop them out with this guy onto this rack. And then these, this is designed so you can kind of set them down on those drying racks out in the sun. Um, in Oregon, it takes anywhere from a few days to a few weeks from the dry. In Africa, it's you know a couple days in the sun. That's about it. <laughs> awesome. Okay. And make sure you really get the ends. Okay. Awesome, that's perfect, that's perfect. You guys got it. Thank you. Just put a knife. Oh yeah. 